from today, February 20, up to February 24. It is entitled, Historical Truths and Life, as you see here. It talks about Scarborough Show in ancient maps. And it includes framed reproductions of 58 maps that have been collected by Supreme Court Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio. This seems to be his uh, main advocacy in the past few years. The exhibit is being mounted in collaboration with the Institute for Maritime and Ocean Affairs, or IMOA. It is a private, non-stop, non-profit corporation which has been organized to conduct research, studies, and fora on maritime and ocean affairs of the Philippines. The IMOA provided all the materials for this exhibit. So we have some uh, flyers for you. The framed exhibits were done in collaboration with them, the maps, and even the captions and the text that you see all over. None of that was PSC's handiwork. They were all from IMOA. So we're very grateful to Attorney Elma Lugardio and her associates in IMOA because they had provided this exhibit. And it's a moving exhibit. I first saw this in the OGAP conference in Siliman and was inspired to bring it here to PSSC. The exhibit will engage us and the rest of the public who will come next week and hopefully encourage participation in discussions that continue regarding the Scarborough, Fair, uh, Scarborough Show. The frame maps date from as far back as 1136 AD, which may be interesting to our geographers and sociologists and anthropologists and historians. The originals were located by Justice Carpio in different libraries and institutions around the world and uh, digital reproductions. If you want to see the original digital reproduction, you will have to go to the, uh, the office of the uh, Supreme Court where Justice Carpio has the original reproductions. These are the original uh, reproductions of his digital reproductions. Now each map, just to uh, give you some kind of uh, orientation on how to do your tour, each map has a caption that will tell you its origin, whether it's from a, a map done by a Spanish priest or a, a European uh, adventurer. To, to give its origin, its emphasis, it talks about what? Maritime things or crops of the area and the, and, uh, the era. And will give you the significance in relation to the issue of the Scarborough show. So the focus is on the Scarborough show, as we have said, and the maps provide information on which of two claimants, China or the Philippines, has the most historical links to Scarborough show, based on the maps. So the questions that you could ask while you are viewing them would be, does Scarborough show appear on any ancient Chinese map, whether made by Chinese authorities or foreigners? The Scarborough show appear on any ancient Philippine map, whether made by Philippine authorities or foreigners. And the present issue of the day, can the nine dash line shown on a map published by the government of the Republic of China in 1947 be used by now the Philippines Repub the, Pe the People's Republic of China in the use it now to claim the entire South China Sea including the waters around the Scarborough Shoal. The maps will provide some hints to answering these questions, but of course we would like to hear other views and other historical facts probably added to those maps. That is why we have a series of public lectures, beginning with the lecture this morning by Dr. J. Matal Bakal on the uh, Bajo de Basilo. I will ask now our chairperson, Dr. Caridad de Roja, to introduce Dr. Matumba.
Good morning to all. So it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for this morning, Dr. Batumbakan. Dr. Batumbakan is Dean of the Institute for Maritime Affairs and the Law of the Sea. A graduate of the UP College of Law, Professor Batumbakan holds a master's degree in marine management and a doctorate in, in the science of law, both from Dalhousie University in Canada. His graduate degrees were acquired under scholarship grants from the Canadian International Development Agency and the prestigious Pierre and Elliot Trudeau Foundation, respectively. His career spans a diverse field of marine policy research, including marine territorial and jurisdictional issues, international maritime boundary negotiations, high seas fisheries, seafaring, shipping, marine environmental protection, coastal resource management, maritime security, and archipelagic studies. Dr. Batumbakal was the legal advisor of the technical team that prepared and successfully pursued the Philippines' claim to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles in the ben Benham Rice region. The Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf recognized Philippine jurisdiction over the Benham Rice region in April 2012. Again, we would like to introduce uh, this morning our guest uh, speaker, Dr. Jay Batumba. which is credited as being the first complete map of the Philippine archipelago. 
Prior to this, there were also various maps, no? Uh, but this one is fairly complete and it's very detailed. The actual map is about that large. And you can actually uh, look at the various notations within those islands and you see the names, place names, of the many towns and, and populations that have been established by that time. Now the thing, uh, the reason why this is relevant to us, particularly this Scarborough Shoal, is these monuments that you see here. Those are actually the uh, those are actually the earliest representations of Scarborough Shoal with a distinct Philippine name. And respectively, they are named, the, these uh, shoals are uh, Galit, Panakot, and Dubai. Okay. Now, there are three shoals I know, but as uh, we realized later on, there are three shoals because these are basically the attributable to the inaccuracies of map making during that period. During that time, we had not yet determined an accurate way of, uh, or, or discovered an accurate way of measuring uh, the uh, longitudes, and therefore they could not properly uh, place uh, uh, locations. No? So these are based on reports of mariners and seafarers, no? to, which were collected by the map maker. And based on those reports, no, he would draw uh, these uh, representations then collect also information from existing maps and try to integrate them. So apparently, this, uh, there are three reefs on, on the western side of the zone simply because uh, the interpreter at the time thought that these were referring to different reefs. But what is important is that all three reefs, as you'll notice, are aside that line that goes from Manila Bay and then northwards toward the zone. That line there, and that is the root of the Galleon Trail. Okay. And therefore, these are important because they were always known to the Galleons. They were an important reference point no, for navigation. This is not a title. This is not evidence of title. It is not a title itself. So despite all of the maps that you see upstairs, all of the maps that China has referred to, ancient maps that they refer to, this does not constitute any form of title. Uh, next slide, please. Now, anyone can make a map, just as I. I made this map using Google Earth, and this is a representation of all of the current national maritime boundaries of the Philippines. Okay. Um, this is the baselines. These are the baselines of the Delta of uh, the Philippines, established under RA 9522 in 2009. This is what we're claiming as our territorial sea, based on the Treaty of Paris limits, as well as the Treaty of Washington and the Treaty uh, the convention between the United States and uh, Great Britain separating the Philippine archipelago from Borneo. This is the Palayan Island Group area. Uh, this is the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone, subject, however, to negotiations between uh, with our neighboring countries. These are the locations of the uh, islands and rocks that the Philippines currently occupies in the Palayan Island Group with a 12 nautical mile territorial sea drawn around them. And this is the location of Scarborough Shoal with a 12 nautical mile territorial sea around it. Well, this is the Benham Rise region, which we were able to uh, successfully claim uh, in accordance with the okay. So anyone can make a map, really, especially in this day and age. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Now, China's claim to the South China Sea. Uh, next slide. This is actually the earliest official document that you could uh, say represents the earliest expression of China's current claim to the South China Sea. It was issued not by mainland China, but by Taiwan, the Kuomintang government, which had already retreated to the island of Formosa by that time uh, on account of the civil war. And as a, pro as a part probably of the process no, of that, uh, they laid claim to these islands within the South China Sea. The, the translation of this uh, line actually is more or less a map of the South Sea Islands. Okay? Uh, and this, these lines comprise 11 dashes. And they're, and they're different from the current nine dash lines that you might have heard of. Now because if you look at, look at it here, there's a branch that goes into the Sino Sea. And it's, there are two very close lines here, 
and there are two additional lines here which mark the 11th, 10th and 11th lines. These days, those lines are no longer there. That's why we call it a 9-line. Okay. Um, next slide, please. This is a, well, semi-official map because it was issued not by the national government but by the province. And you see that it's, it's slightly different. No? Both in its um, the nature of the line itself, the shape, as well as the location compared to, will you go back to the previous one? The previous slide, please. Okay. Compared to that, okay? also in terms of area coverage, it is slightly different. No? That uh, already indicates still the problem with the 9 dash line because every time somebody draws it, it's always slightly different and there's no exact location. Okay. Uh, next slide. And next. Okay. Now, Despite all of that, you know, because um, between 1947 to 2009, you would see, mm -hmm. researchers like me would see various representations of the S9 dash line being issued uh, or being drawn no, by various sources, both national uh, as well as provincial and by some scholars. Okay. The thing is, you never can tell uh, exactly what those lines represent. Are they a national boundary? Are they a territorial boundary? Are they just a line to indicate what comprises the South Sea Islands? No? It was never really that clear. And up to 2009, no, there was no official interpretation, official reference to the Nine Dash Line. You know, and, and the reason is that you had mainland China, and but the document was issued by Taiwan, which it regarded as a renegade province. Okay. Now this changed in 2009 because. In response to the claims of Vietnam and Malaysia for continental shelf areas within the South China Sea, uh, the mainland, Ch mainland China sent a note verbal yeah, to the United Nations, circulated to all other members of the UN, where it asserted that China has indisputable sovereignty over the islands in the South China Sea and the adjacent waters, and enjoys sovereign rights and jurisdiction over the relevant waters as well as the seabed and subsoil thereof. And they said that the above position is consistently held by the Chinese government and is widely known by the international community. Now, the, the, the kicker there is that last, uh, last part, widely known by the international community. The problem is that even though it might have been widely known by academics, by scholars, no, by people who have been studying South China Sea, it was never officially expressed because it was made by the uh, the, 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 the original map was made by the by the Republic of uh, China and in Taiwan, no? not the mainland uh, government. So the status of that declaration was actually rather anomalous. Okay? They, they could not recognize Taiwan's map unless they recognized that Taiwan was the uh, uh, government in power. Okay? So that's why it was uh, problematic. But anyway, they say that it is widely known. But the truth is, uh, next slide please. This is the first official expression of the Nine Dash Line uh, in an official document coming from mainland China. So it's only in 2009 basically that legally, that technically, that technically they actually adopted the Nine Dash Line. And that is the map now that becomes the reference point for the rest of uh, the international community. 